Late yesterday, the Supreme Court blocked Texas from enforcing a new law that would prevent social media platforms such as Twitter and Instagram from banning users based on their viewpoint. John Yang has more. Nick, the law is part of the Republican battle with uh, social media platforms over what they say is censorship of conservative and religious views. An appeals court blocked a similar Florida law from taking effect while it is being legally challenged. The key legal question is whether the platforms are like phone companies or cable companies, as Texas and Florida lawmakers argue, and therefore subject to regulation. Or, as the industry argues, are they like publishers, protected by the First Amendment? Now, two perspectives. Carl Zabo, vice president and general manager, uh, sorry, general counsel of NetChoice, the trade association challenging the Texas and Florida laws. He teaches internet law at the George Mason University Law School. And Adam Kandub, who directs the, uh, 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 I'm sorry, directs the intellectual property information and communications law program at Michigan State University. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Mr. Kandub, I'd like to start with you. And, and if we'd leave, I want to get to the legal issue later. But first, Explain to us why this law, these laws are good ideas. Why are they necessary? Well, I think a lot of Americans fear that certain groups, certain people with certain perspectives um, are being shut out of the public square, which is what the Supreme Court terms the Internet. Um, the social media platforms are the place where we discuss politics, where we meet our friends, where politicians talk to voters. Uh, and if we have a thumb on the scale so that only certain viewpoints um, get promoted, that's undermining a central prop in our society, democratic deliberation. Um, that's what our nation needs more of. Carl Zabo, what's your argument or what's your response to that? Is there a thumb on the scale? You know, what we're talking about here is actually pretty simple. It's about government, in this case, Republican government, forcing a private platform to say something it doesn't want to say. It would be like the government going in to Chipotle and telling them that they have to serve hamburgers because people want hamburgers. And of course, that's absurd. So it's a really simple issue. Do we want, in this case, the Republican states of Texas and Florida to be able to tell private businesses that they have to host content that they don't want? And we're not just talking about political content. We're talking about lawful but awful content. We're talking about stuff like terrorist speech, terrorist recruitment, child grooming, foreign disinformation. A shooter's manifesto would still have to be required to be allowed on these platforms under these laws. And there's a reason why NetChoice is fighting against these. And it's because the First Amendment protects every person, every business from this type of government compelled speech. And it doesn't matter if you are like a cable company or an ISP, because the Supreme Court says even they are guaranteed these First Amendment protections and not have to carry speech that they don't want to carry. So really, it's a pretty simple issue. And there's a reason why we've had two district court judges, four circuit court judges, and at least five U.S. Supreme Court justices side with us every step of the way. Adam Cantu, what about that argument that this would require uh, social media platforms to uh, to distribute terror speeches, as, as uh, uh, Mr. Zabo says, and, and disinformation. This is this is a mischaracterization of the law. The law is quite clear that the platforms are free to um, censor dangerous content. Content they can censor censor um, and get rid of all sorts of um, undesirable content like nudity. Um, what they can't do is censor whole viewpoints. So they can say no nudity on my platform, but they can't censor me if I want to be an advocate of a venaturist lifestyle. Um, and furthermore, getting back to um, uh, Mr. Zabu's point, that's just absurd. I mean, the government requires businesses to host speech that they don't like in all sorts of instances. Um, this television program is a good example. Um, local television broadcasters can compel cable systems to carry their 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 um, channels and their programs. And the Supreme Court has upheld this. Um, the, Supreme, um, the Supreme Court and other courts have upheld um, the obligations of telephone companies to carry on their wires, views they don't like. Similarly, in the network neutrality 
um, regulations. The U.S. Um, Court for uh, Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia said ISPs must carry indiscriminately all sorts of messages. So this is just, you know, this is smoke and mirrors saying you now private businesses have some sort of First Amendment expressive right to exclude people. Um, restaurants don't have an expressive right to exclude black people or Jewish people from their from their restaurants um, because they want to make a point. Similarly, the the platforms, which are which again are are the Supreme Court has called our, our public square, can't exclude people they don't like to make some obscure and not quite clear ex- uh, expressive point. It, it, Mr. Can do, I want to I want to make sure I understand what you're saying. You're saying that they the pl- under these laws the platforms could still set a, a code of conduct, a standard. Of course. Uh, Oh, of course they could. If you look at the law, and I, I welcome your viewers to go on the internet and look at look up HB twenty, um, passed by Texas, the state of Texas. Um, the, the the statute says, look, you can. It only goes to viewpoint. It doesn't go to content, and it allows um, the platforms to censor um, types of speech that the government allows them already allows them to do, which under Section two thirty would include obscenity, indecent type of speech, nudity, excessively violent, um, uh, excessively violent content. Um, and it's very disturbing that, that NetChoice is making this claims. I mean, they put this claim in their papers to the Supreme Court. And, you know, that really underscores Justice Alito's dissent that this decision should have been made, should not have been made um, in this context, um, because with all with these false claims, they can't really have a a, a, a proper and um, clear hearing of the issues. Mr. Zabo, what what what's the argument for why social media platforms should have First Amendment protection? You know, it's incredibly simple. They're a private business, and uh, Mr. Kandub and many conservatives support decisions like Hobby Lobby, Masterpiece Cakes, and Citizens United, which are all predicated on the notion that private businesses are private businesses and can decide what's best for their users and their customers. And we have cases like Turner, which is about Turner Broadcast Cable, which says that even cable companies who the district circuit court decides are common carriers, even Turner is able to discriminate on what type of content is or is not allowed. And to the notion of we're just throwing a bunch of spaghetti at the wall and it's smoke and mirrors, well, We must be really good at it because we've convinced four circuit court judges, all of whom are conservatives, that we're right. We we convinced at least five U.S. Supreme Court justices that we're right. And once again, this is a really simple issue that a lot of people try to make much, much, much more complex than it really is. So if I were to go into Chipotle and start flipping over tables we would not blink an eye if Chipotle asked me to leave. They would say, no, get out. You're violating our rules. Uh, I'm well, a... the same thing that happens in the physical rule should happen in the online rule. And what we're seeing in these two laws is that's being forbidden. And not only that, it's forbidding our ability to speak freely, to moderate content how we want, to decide how to promote content that we want. So Mr. I'm, I'm, gonna have to, I wanna inter- I'm, I'm sorry, Anna, I, I'm going to interrupt you because I want, to, I want Mr. Kandub to respond to that. And we have a very little amount of time left. Sure. Look, the social media companies are about connecting people to people. They're about the expression of their users. Nobody goes on to the social media um, platforms to hear what you know Zuckerberg feels about their kids' pictures. It's about communicating. And like the telephone company, they have an obligation to serve all. Um, Mr. Zabo says that it's like Chipotle, and Chipotle can't discriminate. It can't say, oh, we can't, you can't come and eat my food because you're African-American or you're black or in certain states and jurisdictions in this country because we don't like your political point of view. Gentlemen, That's we're going to have to, I'm sorry to interrupt, Mr. Kandub. To the internet. We're going to have to leave it there. Adam Kandub of the uh, Michigan State University Law School and Carl Zabo of Net Choice and George Mason University Law School. Thanks very much. Thank you.